to welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Friday, October 1st, 2021. I'm Jeremy Crosby. Hope you had a wonderful day. Glad you're tuning in with us tonight for another edition of Talking Fitchburg. And we got a busy one for you. It's been a busy show all this week uh, to wrap up the month of September and welcome in October. We'll get you the latest headlines coming up here, including uh, tonight's football game following uh, Talking Fitchburg tonight. Starts at 7 o'clock. We'll have the details coming up. We'll be checking in with the Fitchburg Police Department uh, on quite a few topics. A lot uh, happening in the police department department uh, with recruiting. Uh, we'll talk about some of the recent shots fired incidents and uh, of course some safety tips as well. All that uh, coming up in the digest. In the guest segment we'll check in with Fitchburg star Kimberly will be here to give us an update of what happened at the recent council meeting and other pieces of news within the city. So let's get into it. We've got some headlines for you and football uh, is tonight. It's homecoming night tonight as uh, the Verona Wildcats host the Middleton Cardinals. 4-0 and Cardinals coming to town tonight, 3-1. and Could we uh, have an upset in the making tonight for homecoming? I can't think of a better way to celebrate it. Either way, uh, in the standings, Middleton, 4-0, uh, and some prairies, 4-0, and Verona, 3-1, and and James Madison uh, Memorial, that's 2-2. Two and two. So uh, those are your top four teams here in the Big 8 Conference. And uh, we'll have that coverage live on the community channel right here. you got to stay right here at 7 o'clock so you can tune in for that. Other news, we got the fall hydrant flushing going on. This starts on Monday. Fire hydrant flushing uh, will start on Monday, October 4th, and will finish on Friday, October 29th. Flushing will occur Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Due to flushing, water may be temporarily discolored. So please make sure that you open up your uh, water faucets to full flow, the cold water, full flow for a few minutes before doing laundry in the evening to avoid damage. And we'll be uh, talking with Bill Balky about this on Monday on Talking Fitchburg of how they'll be doing that process. All right, the mayor's proposed budget is out. Uh, if you haven't checked this out yet, it is online. Uh, the proposed uh, 2020 operating budget available at our website, fitchburgwi.gov. You can go and review that uh, and uh, check out uh, what the mayor has proposed this year. I would say department head meetings coming up next week. They'll be sharing uh, their uh, input on their parts of the budget. Daily lane ramp closures will be uh, happening next week on the Beltline. Uh, this will be uh, happening on the Beltline between Whitney Way and John Nolan Drive. Lanes will uh, be closed 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on October 3rd and 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Thursday, October 4th through the 7th. So please be aware it's going to be some extra traffic backups. And Dane, our uh, Department of Health Services has encouraged you to get your flu shot this year. If you haven't already, uh, Wisconsin uh, or, or DHS has encouraged everyone to get vaccinated for influenza this fall. Vaccine is another layer of protection to prevent against serious illness, hospitalization, death, and from preventable diseases. All right, that does it for the headlines. There's a quick one. Coming up next, we open up our interview with the police department right here on Talk. In Fitchburg. Hey, boss. Okay. He said I'm fine. Hey, son. Hey, Bob. You know you can talk to me. Yeah. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready? That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you, too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joined me from the Fitchburg Police Department. Uh, our uh, chief, before the chief, our acting chief, Matt Lehe. Matt, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? Very good. Thank you. How are you today, Jeremy? I am doing wonderful now that you're here. And we got a lot of stuff to uh, talk about. But first, I just love the uh, the decorating of the office. It has to be pointed out that uh, we've got a police hiring, the posters in the back. We've got a uh, great, great uh, animal uh, back there. And now I just realized what that is. Uh, it's Matt, you you know what you're doing here. That, that's, that's what's going on. You, you've it's been all about the presentation. 
I, it is. It really is. I like it. So uh, I appreciate you uh, putting the effort uh, uh, forth there. Um, we're going to discuss a few things. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about the shots fired instances uh, this past week. We had uh, we've got the fire or uh, the uh, police uh, hiring uh, going on as well. We had a new hire of a police chief, and then uh, talk a little bit about property crime. So a lot to get to uh, in uh, today's uh, interview. Uh, we'll start with the shots fired incident. We had uh, a few back to back instances this past week. Uh, mm -hmm. Overall, uh, Matt, from your background here and, and being with the police department, what's hap what happens behind the scenes? So we get these reports come in uh, and uh, basically what, what is happening behind the scenes on that? So I guess what the, the first thing that I think the public uh, needs to take into consideration is at, at this point, there's no, there's no uh, any indication that the incidents over the last uh, month have been associated. That's probably going back all the way to September 8th. Um, throughout Dane County, we have gun violence is more, more often associated with persons than locations. Um, so people, they'll encounter each other at varying locations throughout Dane County. Uh, so it's also, it's important to keep that in mind that it's not this neighborhood or that neighborhood, it's where the two points intersect and it's, and whatever uh, individuals are having that conflict over each other. So with that in mind, obviously these types of incidents, gun violence can um, erupt over multiple jurisdictions uh, and also impacting multiple neighborhoods throughout, throughout those jur jurisdictions. So we understand the community's concern, their frustration, um, and they're more often than not, not random, but of course, they can put um, randomly put uninvolved community residents uh, at risk. So um, there may be this perception that nothing is being done, uh, but uh, I can assure you that we're continuing to actively investigate all shots fired incidents uh, to the fullest extent possible, of course. And it's also important to keep in mind that these types of incidents, because of the time of day, the location, uh, they can take months to investigate. And that uh, includes obtaining evidence, speaking to witnesses, uh, locating suspects. And of course, those investigations are directly impacted by what type of evidence is available. If we have um, video surveillance in and around that area, as well as just the cooperation of who we believe are parties involved, and that can definitely uh, impact the success or the length of, of those particular investigations. Um, so I also want to uh, reiterate that um, the Fitchburg Police Department, as well as the Madison Police Department, have uh, attempted to go into a joint venture on a grant um, to partner with community stakeholders to hopefully prevent uh, violence um, proactively instead of reactively, which is more often, more often than not how we get involved in these, in these incidents. So it's very important for the community, even if they hear shots fired, they should be calling the, the, the police department. I would much rather have our officers come out, investigate it, find out it's fireworks, than never hearing about it um, until two to three days later, because that, and then it actually be a verified shots fired event. It can limit our ability to obtain evidence. It, it just makes the, the investigation that more difficult to get on top of instead of just reacting to days later. So if they do see anything out of place, people out of place, uh, something that looks like it's starting to, to escalate, do not hesitate to call the police because we'd much rather step in prior to anybody getting hurt or some sort of uninvolved uh, consequences from, from bystanders. I appreciate the update, Matt. Uh, uh, Matt. And uh, quickly too, if you could, uh, where can people submit tips to? So there's a lot of different ways to submit tips that submit anonymously. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, uh, where can people do that? Uh, well, of course, anybody can call 911, of course, if they, if they do see uh, something uh, or hear shots fired or see some sort of incident uh, escalating. 
Otherwise, they can also call our non-emergency line at the Fitchburg Police Department, uh, 608-270-4300. Otherwise, they can uh, call Crime Stoppers. They can submit a tip anonymously online uh, through our police department website. So they have varying degrees also are on, on our Facebook page as well. So. All right, uh, turning our attention uh, to uh, joining the team. Uh, we, we have a new police chief that's joining our team. Plus we're looking for uh, people uh, to join our team. So uh, first, just an update uh, and congrats on uh, a new hire of a, a police chief coming from the uh, uh, police and fire commission. Uh, tell us uh, what's happening on that front. So uh, the other night at the Police and Fire Commission on Monday, I believe, the 27th of September, the Police and Fire Commission um, offered a formal position of police chief to former Milwaukee Chief of Police, Alfonso Morales. Uh, so I think our department is, is eager to finally put the hiring process to bed and move forward uh, with, the, with the new chief, obviously. Uh, Alfonso does have some conditions to work through uh, prior to his start date, but and nothing has been uh, formalized as of yet, but we're looking at him starting sooner rather than later. All right, in the police uh, uh, department, uh, we are looking to hire uh, officers, whether you have experience or not have experience, we uh, would love you to join our team. Correct, uh, that hiring process is set to close on, or the application process, I should say, Set to close on October 10th. Uh, you can find out more information at FitchburgWI.gov um, in the employment section. Uh, we also have uh, information on our police department uh, Facebook page if you do have any questions. Uh, it does, like you did say, Jeremy, Jeremy, it does offer up a entry level uh, hiring process and as well as we do have a lateral officer uh, hiring process as well. So officers from other jurisdictions with uh, certain levels of experience can come in at a higher level of pay and as well as additional leave time. So that's a benefit to, uh, to other officers with experience. Fantastic. Uh, finally, uh, talking uh, in the uh, property crimes, uh, you'd mentioned this to me and I want to get it out there that um, we, we definitely share uh, uh, plenty of tips online and, and talk about it uh, a lot, but uh, you guys are actually willing to come out and speak to community groups uh, and uh, to share information uh, related to uh, anti-property theft. Right. Uh, any, any time that we can offer up any level of crime prevention tips, uh, Property crime, it's, it's one of those things that's out there, it's prevalent, but it's extremely preventable uh, types of crimes. So we're, we're doing our part from, an, uh, from a department standpoint, uh, having officers uh, in the communities, uh, trying to do those active patrols during those typical periods where property crime, uh, property crimes do happen, uh, such as overnight, um, making contact at residents, having them close their doors, uh, identifying any suspicious activity. Uh, but you're absolutely right, Jeremy. Uh, if it, there is some sort of community group or neighborhood association that would like uh, some more direct attention to their particular neighborhood through a meeting uh, to allow them the opportunities to ask questions of officers, uh, what types of statistics or patterns are occurring in their neighborhoods, uh, I highly encourage them to reach out to the police department. We definitely can make those arrangements whether it's virtually, whether it's in person, uh, we can definitely um, meet with them to speak with them, try to provide them with some sort of information that makes them feel a little bit more comfortable and just raise awareness of, of being a good neighbor. And if, if their neighbor's garage door is open or something suspicious is going on around their, their homes um, to kind of open up those lines of communication uh, between neighbors, because in, in the end, if, is, if you have a good neighbor or a good support system within the neighborhood, it can greatly reduce anything that a police officer driving through their neighborhood can, can do. Absolutely. And we'll keep uh, getting the message out uh, for you uh, as uh, we uh, do. And uh, we appreciate your time uh, and uh, information, uh, uh, Matt. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, to uh, everything you uh, and the department is doing. Uh, keep up the good work out there. And we'll look forward to checking back with the department next month. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it.
You bet. Uh, Matt Leahy, uh, you're uh, acting uh, police chief right now, and uh, we appreciate his time and uh, effort uh, meeting with us here and sharing the information. We'll take a break. More to come. You're watching Talking Pittsburgh. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being- Hey, sorry I didn't respond, I was driving. She must be a keeper. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Oh, Joining you today for the Fitchburg star, it is our star, Kimberly. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing just fine. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're here with us and we got a lot of news to get to a lot of stuff happening uh, this week and uh, we do this uh, for our council recap is what we're doing this for uh, and you take the time to help us with this and we are so thankful that you do that and we start with the big news uh, coming in this week it was yeah. a new police chief uh, tell us uh, uh, the details uh, from what you gathered uh, for this new police chief yeah well technically I didn't gather anything because I actually had my course <laughs> In all, in all transparency, I had my correspondent Kate covering it. So I am just going to regurgitate uh, what she reported on. <laughs> so right. um, we have a new police chief. His name is Alfonso Morales. Um, he uh, most recently uh, was the city of Milwaukee uh, police chief. He retired. Um, there was a little bit of, um, of lawsuit going on there. And he, so he ended up settling with the city. Uh, for a little over six hundred thousand um, dollars, but so he is now a uh, Fitchburg police chief. Um, he was chosen from four semifinalists that participated in a um, that participated in a oh my gosh I'm blanking on it um, a public forum back in August, and then the police and fire commission narrowed that down uh, the day later, and so then they chose between Morales and uh, Vic Stevenick. So. Um, from what I hear from Kate, they had deliberated on Monday for a little over two hours um, and Morales got three yes votes and two no votes. So um, was definitely split on the vote there. But um, that that is who they hired. You betcha. And he'll uh, got a couple more things to go through and uh, all that clears out. Uh, he will uh, be here uh, in uh, the next couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll watch mm -hmm. for that. And uh, Kimberly, We've got the first interview lined up for him, so don't even ask. Yeah, we've got this going. <laughs> what kidding. day is that? I'll see if I can beat it. Yeah, I bet you. <laughs> kidding. We are excited uh, to have Alfonso joining uh, joining the Fitchburg team here. Uh, other news uh, from the council meeting: we had uh, uh, the hub uh, had some uh, signage that was approved. Yeah, so they they the council approved um, the overall concept design. Um, and so really what that means is it allows them to move forward with construction in spring of 2022. Um, 
So the hub is going to be built for people that don't know. It's going to be built in the North Fish Country Road um, slash Leopold neighborhood, right along Traceway Drive, um, right along that Nine Springs Golf Course area. So Phase One um, will be on the north side of Traceway Drive, and so it is looking like it will include a community center, um, a playground, a um, a bike track, all that fun stuff. So. Yep, they're planning on having that start uh, construction in 2022 spring. Um, and then they push the phase two back, which will be on the south side of the road, back by one year um, in the capital improvement plan. So um, yeah, you can look forward to some more development over in the North Fish Hatchery Road uh, area. If you are not already sick and tired of the, uh, of the construction over there already, so. Hey, the road construction is almost done, Kimberly. We're excited <laughs> and uh, we're excited uh, for the hub as well. So uh, we'll uh, keep everybody up to date uh, on that. Uh, turning over to the mayor's uh, proposed 2020 budget uh, came out uh, as well. Uh, tell us the details uh, you're learning from this. Yeah, so the city of Fitchburg um, each year has to go through a process of determining what its operating budget is for the following year. Um, and really what defines the wiggle room that, uh, that the budget has is a lot of it is the net new construction um, seen in the city. And so the city had a lot of net new construction, 5.35% um, of the city's entire, um, in, entire you know, value, which is a little bit less than $4 billion came from buildings built in this last year that came on the tax roll. So um, the city gained a lot of flexibility um, but unfortunately, um, a lot of it is going to Town of Madison annexation. So um, they're going to be hiring um, approximately 15 new staff members within the next year in order to provide services for the 1,500 uh, Town of Madison students, or not students, residents <laughs> who will then become uh, City of Fitchburg residents uh, as of October 2022. So it's a little bit of here's your allowance, but you need to spend it on the window you broke 20 years ago <laughs> to fix it. Not saying that the town of Madison annexation is more open, but more so you have to kind of do your due diligence with this money instead of getting to use it for fun things. So yeah. No, and we, uh, we're excited uh, for the town of Madison to come on board, excited to uh, welcome all the residents uh, that uh, will be coming in uh, for the piece, the, the parts that Fitchburg will be uh, getting. So a lot more information coming on that, but yes, yes definitely an emphasis uh, focus uh, on that. And that's been a lot of work behind the scenes yeah. um, well, a good piece, uh, to get to this point. So um, yeah. we're excited. A good piece of the, um, of the town of Madison annexation also is that it looks like, and I don't have all the details on this, but it looks like the city of Matt or the city of Fitchburg will be able to actually count those residents in uh, the census when they do their redistricting. And that was something that we weren't quite sure if they were gonna be allowed to do. Um, so it looks like people who are currently town of Madison residents but will become city of Fitchburg residents will be allowed to be counted in uh, redistricting and will have that equal and fair vote as all the other districts. So that's also pretty exciting. Yeah, we got re redistricting stuff starting next week here. So uh, funny you say that. Uh, you can catch all that action here on Fact TV. And uh, of course, at the Fitchburg Star. To wrap up, it is homecoming season. And uh, we've got uh, got a couple of school districts with some homecomings, especially That's this Friday. Yes. So Verona's is today. Um, so if you did not know, the parade starts uh, in the afternoon. 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. So they actually have a new parade route because it's a new high school. So if you're looking to go to the parade, you are gonna want to go uh, camp out along West Verona Avenue instead of along Main Street. So um, make sure you're not sitting along North Main Street <laughs> waiting for the parade. You will get zero candy. Well, you'll hear, yeah, you'll be hearing all of the action going on. You'd be like, where's the parade? And then you're like, oh, no, it's on the other side. You will have to walk down to Miller's and buy your own candy if you go there. <laughs> you, it won't. Um, okay, yeah, that's that, that'll that work. That'll work. <laughs> but then Oregon is next Friday. So um, the Oregon homecoming parade will start uh, at the high school uh, on North Perry Parkway. Um, I don't know the exact um, the exact route yet, but you can expect that it will start at end of high school. So if you go if you gravitate towards the high school, you have a pretty good bet of getting something. So perfect. Yeah. 
Well, we're we're pumped either way uh, that uh, this is uh, coming up here. And uh, yeah, we'll have Friday Night Football uh, here on Fact TV. And uh, of course, you can catch all of the action uh, and the recaps uh, through the Fitchburg Star, through your sports section. It's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm really all about making sure people get free candy. I, I could care less about the sports of it. Get, get your free candy. Oh. It's October. <laughs> Make sure you get your spot, make sure you get your candy, have your bag ready, and uh, cheer as loud as you can. Hey, Jeremy, I'm looking out for the people here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that any parade from here on out, I'm going to make sure that I'm sitting by you because I think I would have a lot of fun. That's all I'm saying. She's like, yep, speechless. All right. Well, uh, if people want to find out more information about what's going on at the uh, Star uh, and up-to-date news, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can go to FitchburgStar.com. Um, just a reminder, if people have the Fitchburg Star bookmark from um, a few months ago, redo your bookmark because it is a different website now and it will probably send you to a 404 error not found page. Um, so make sure you're going to FitchburgStar.com or ConnectFitchburg.com. Um, we keep it updated weekly uh, with fresh news and community events and sports so um we also have a newsletter that goes out so you won't want to miss those things every thursday look forward to it of course oh. that's the best part of your thursday right <laughs> sure sure it is no it is all right uh, kimberly thank you so much always a thank pleasure you. talking with you <laughs> you stay safe out there and we'll check back in with you in a couple of weeks i will i will try to not get hit today of going and reaching for candy at the parade so <laughs> If you come home with nothing and I interview you next time and you say, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get any candy, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to hold up some candy or something. Like, I've got a big bag here for you. And yeah. What up? I'll come trick or treating at the, uh, at the city hall later, oh, this, later this month. <laughs> Gosh, that means we have to leave candy out for you. And that's where we'll end this interview right now. Uh, Kimberly, thank you. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking thank Fitchburg. You. <laughs> See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed. And for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg, wrapping up the show. I want to thank Matt Leahy from the Fitchburg Police Department for uh, helping us out. And, of course, Kimberly from the Fitchburg Star. Check out the Fitchburg Star on either their update every Thursday or the newspaper comes out monthly and said check out the website for the latest information. As we wrap up here, remember you can stay connected with Fact TV all weekend long. And I want to wish the Wildcats a happy homecoming tonight. And we hope you tune in for that game starting at 7 or you'll be able to rewatch it real soon at all of these great places. Have a great weekend.